join our hearts to begin our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning to you all. Good morning. And I welcome you to today's celebration. On this day when the church celebrates the memorial of St. Elizabeth and certain religious who pray for all those who we know who go by the name Elizabeth. Elizabeth here, and all we know, asking that the Lord in his mercy may continue to bless each and every one of us. At this Mass too, we are requested to pray for the repulse of the soul of Leo Rucker and Aurora Rington. And for each and every one of you, your heart desires, your intentions, your families, the work of your hands, we pray for God's blessings and strength through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we are sinners and in need of God's grace. Let us therefore take a moment, recalling the times we have failed God and man. Let us be sorry for those times as we ask God for his pardon and peace. He raised the dead to the life and the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on earth. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who crowned with the gift of true faith, St. Elizabeth and set us burning zeal to find you, grant by her intercession and example that we may always seek you with diligent love and find you in daily service with sincere faith through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and rests with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Proclamation from the first letter of St. John. Children, let no one deceive you. The person who acts in righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. Whoever sins belongs to the devil, because the devil has sinned from the beginning. Indeed, the Son of God was revealed to destroy the works of the devil. No one who is begotten by God commits sin because God's seed remains in him. He cannot sin because he is begotten by God. In this way, the children of God and the children of the devil are made plain. No one who fails to act in righteousness belongs to God, nor anyone who does not love his brother. The word of the Lord. Amen. God. Responsorial psalm. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All, All the ends, ends of the earth, earth have seen, seen the saving power of God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him. His holy arm. All the ends of the earth. earth seen the saving power of God. <laughs> Let the sea and what filled it resound, the world and those who dwell in it. Like the rivers clap their hands, the mountains shout with them for joy before the Lord. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. The Lord comes, he comes to rule the earth. He will rule the world with justice and the peoples with equity. All, All the ends of the earth have seen the, the same power of God. God. Please stand. <coughs> Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. prophets. In 
these last days he has spoken to us through the Son. Alleluia, Alleluia. two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translates means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying. And they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning to you all. Good morning, Father. In the post today, John reminds us, whoever sins is not in God. Whosoever that sins is not in God. Now, the question becomes, what is sin? What makes us not to be one with God. And that is sin. Sin is the rejection of goodness. The rejection of that absoluteness which is God himself. The deprivation of good is sin. And that is evil. But then the question is, how do we as God's children remain in God? It is by faith and by our actions. And that's why John went on to remind us, my brothers and sisters, he who is in Christ cannot sin. He who is in God cannot sin. And that means that our, our thoughts, our actions at all times must be prompted by the Spirit of God in us to be in line with what God wants. That we fight the inner struggles within us to do what does not please God. That is exactly what it means. That we struggle each day to align ourselves to that will of God. To get into the right position, into the right frame of mind. That when we seek good, we act it out. We always seek the highest perfection. And then when you go down to the gospel, it is very much exemplified. John was reckoned as a prophet very much respected by the people and loved. He had made disciples. But then when Jesus appeared on the scene, he pointed, it, he pointed out to, it, to the people, Behold the Lamb of God. And the Word of God said, At that moment, some of his disciples left him and followed Jesus. Man in himself, each and every one of us, we have that innate desire for the greater good. Am I right? Everybody wants what is good. No matter how much we are depraved, we want what is good to the best of our knowledge and judgment. Even those who go to kill, for them it is the greater good. But they will be judged according to their consciences. But those of us whose conscience has been formed in the light of Christ Jesus, we always are under the influence of the Holy Spirit to discern what is right and to have the power of God to execute what is right. And that was why when, 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 when John said, Behold the Lamb of God, his brothers, his friends, his disciples left him. They wanted that greater good. If we respect you, honor you, and worship you 
as a great man. And there is somebody greater than you. Why are we wasting our time here? Let's get to the greatest of all. You get it? And that was, that was it. They felt, this is a daily God. Let's go to the higher God. And they followed Jesus. I wonder about Jesus is this. Jesus has this contagious love. He has this contagious relationship that once you experience him, you cannot just leave him. So, the disciples followed him. And Jesus turned and he said to them, what are you looking for? What do you want? The same question he asks us every day of our lives. When we come to pray, Jesus turns and listens to us. And he says to us, what do you want? What is that that has made you leave your home to come here? What has brought you before me? Obviously, they were confused because they were not prepared. They weren't prepared for that fundamental question. Jesus asked them, what do you want? The only thing that would come out of them was, where do you live? That's a stupid question. What do you want? Where do you live? Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we approach God confused. Sometimes we approach God without a definitive structure in our minds, a way to relate what we want and what we want God to do for us. We fail to, to, to realize our weaknesses and our strength. We fail that, look, we are going to God, not just because everybody is going, but because we want to go for more than mass. What are you go hoping to get? Why are you going to behold the face of God? But you see, even in their confusion, the Spirit of God enlightened them. That when they met Jesus, he took them to where he lived, and they saw. But then, one went back. Because he had experienced the love that is eternal. He has experienced something that he wants to be part of, and he wants another to be part of. He went to bring his brother, Simon. And when he brought Simon to the Lord, he said, come, we have seen. We have seen the Messiah. We have seen the Christ. Come, let's go. And when he came, Jesus said to Peter, you are Peter, the son of John. Before you were born, I knew you. That is why I am God. But from now on, your name will be Cephas, which means rock, which means Peter. God calls us. He has called us. And he has made us the rock of our foundation. He has changed our names. He has changed our attitude. He has changed our strength. He has revived us, my brothers and sisters, and he leaves us to go. <clears throat> Be strong as it were to bring others to him. To bring others to experience that same love. But then, we need to let that love we have experienced from him be transmitted to others through us. If the brother of Simon, if, if the brother of Peter did not transmit that same love, I don't think Simon Peter would have accompanied him. Not just mere words, but his actions spoke. Let our words and our actions, every day of our lives, speak of our faith and what the love we have embraced. God is with us to enable us arrive there. We are on the journey. Never get tired. For the Spirit is with us and we shall get there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us rise in faith and bring our needs to our God, who is there in love, to shower, shower us with his love and to hear our prayers. Just as Jesus came to do God's will, may church leaders proclaim and explain God's will to the world with clarity and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Just as Jesus came to do God's will, may the leaders and nations work together to bring justice and peace to their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Just as Jesus came to do God's will, may this faith community strive to love and serve one another with joy and generosity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
just as Jesus came to do God's will, may those of little faith discover that it is God's will to forgive, save, and glorify all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Just as Jesus came to do God's will, may all who suffer from abuse, violence, and addiction experience the helping, healing will of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Just as Jesus came to do God's will, may all who have died rejoice in God's will to give them life everlasting and glory forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear yeah. our prayer. For your own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear yeah. our prayer. God our Father, in your mercy, hear our humble prayers. Grant us what we ask you, spoken and unspoken, or we'll bring them before your majesty in faith. Through Christ and our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of our creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May become for us our bread of life. As it be God, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. May become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with a humble and a contrite heart. May the Lord wash over my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. O Lord, we ask that you look graciously upon our gift placed or placed on your altar in celebration of Saint Elizabeth and Satan and grant by the power at work in this sacrifice that we may be more deeply inserted into the mystery of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your heart. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For through him, the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor. When our frailty is assumed by, his, by your word, not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so, in company with the words of angels, we praise you, and with joy, we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth, the glory of your glory, Hosanna in the heart. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the heart. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and restoration, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her unto the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Daniel our Archbishop, Chelsea's Auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the restoration, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Saints, St. Paul, St. Patrick, St. Francis, St. Peter, St. Elizabeth and Satan, St. Monica, St. Cecilia, St. Veronica, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be good heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. We join our hearts, my brothers and sisters. Let us call God Father in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace and joy of our Lord Jesus Christ, be with you always. Amen. Now let us share a sign of peace with each other. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. My brothers and sisters, behold him, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the faithful one who takes away our sins. Happy are those of us called to this supper of the Lamb. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to eternal life.
I am the living bread from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The bread I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Let us pray. As we partake of the sacrament of our salvation, while recalling the memory of St. Elizabeth and Satan, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that we may be inflamed with the burning desire for the heavenly table, and by its power consecrate our life faithfully to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. As it is the first Thursday of the month, we say the prayers of anointing, and then we end the Mass as usual. And then those who want to be anointed will come up and be anointed, and then we'll go home. Lord God, you have said to us through your apostle James, and there are sick people among you, let them send for the priests of the church, and let the priests pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick persons, and the Lord will raise them up, and if they have committed any sins, their sins will be forgiven. Lord, we have gathered here in your name, and we ask you to be among us, to watch over your children, our brothers and sisters, as we ask this with confidence, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Through this holy anointing, may the Lord in his love and mercy help you with the grace of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, through this holy anointing, grant comfort to, to your children who are suffering. When they are afraid, grant them courage. When afflicted, grant them patience. When dejected, afford them your hope. And when alone, assure them the support of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll go in the peace and joy of Christ, for this Mass is ended. Thank you.